Titan at Six Flags Over Texas is the tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster in the Lone Star State. While this Giovanola Hypercoaster is statistically the most impressive coaster in all of Texas, is it the best? For me, no. But I could see a scenario depending upon your taste in rides. So in this video, I will review Titan. Giovanola was founded in 1888 as a steel manufacturing company. In the 1980s, Giovanola entered the amusement ride industry, serving as a subcontractor to Intamin. Giovanola subcontracted 22 different roller coasters for Intamin, and after a decade of doing this, the company founded Giovanola Amusement Rides Worldwide in 1998 to sell amusement rides built directly by them. Giovanola only built three roller coasters, but their box beam track system is very reminiscent of the design used by Bolliger and Mabillard which makes sense considering Claude Mabillard and Walter Bolliger were engineers for Giovanola who developed their famous track style before forming their own company. The track provided glossy smooth rides and produced an intimidating roar. Giovanola only built three coasters, but they were defined by one thing, sustained positive Gs. Their first coaster was Anaconda at Gold Reef City in South Africa. This was an inverted roller coaster that opened in 1999. The ride had a lot of similarities to B&M's successful Batman the Ride layout, but most importantly, it demonstrated to the industry that Giovanola could build coasters on their own. Their second coaster was a record breaker. Six Flags Magic Mountain opened Goliath for the 2000 season. For three months, Goliath held the record for having the largest drop on any continuous circuit roller coaster at 255 feet or 78 meters. Six Flags was clearly impressed by the attraction as they immediately ordered a second Giovanola Hyper for the original park in the chain in Six Flags Over Texas. Six Flags Over Texas had been eyeing a hypercoaster for years. Originally, the park wanted to build an arrow hypercoaster over by Judge Roy Scream, but after the positive reception of Goliath, they instead had Giovanola build Titan, a near clone of Goliath. Titan would be 10 feet taller, standing 245 feet, or 75 meters in height, but the drops in both coasters were identical in size. Titan's drop was slightly steeper though at 65 degrees versus 61 degrees. Both coasters were at the same top speed of 85 miles per hour, but Titan had an additional 812 feet, or 247 meters of track, bringing the total track length to 5,312 feet or 1,619 meters. Titan would include an extra helix in between the airtime hill and the mid-course brake run. Titan would open for the 2001 season at a cost of $25 million, but it would be the last coaster ever built by Giovanola, as the company would declare bankruptcy shortly after the coaster opened. This wasn't necessarily a fault of the amusement ride division, as one of the biggest contributors to the company's bankruptcy was the failure of a hydraulic pen stock at the Biedron Hydraulic Power Station in Switzerland in late 2000. Titan is located in the Texas section of the park. The ride starts by the park's picnic pavilions, and it runs alongside the parking lot. While this coaster dominates the park's skyline and is one of the first coasters you see upon arrival, it can be a royal pain to find. Titan is located at a dead-end service by a single, poorly marked pathway. It reminds me of the placement of Outlaw Running Away. This path is only accessible between the entrance to the El Asadero log flume and a food stand. Titan's sign is barely visible as the thin letters blend in with the trees behind it. The easiest way to find this coaster is to follow the signage to the picnic pavilions. The coaster's queue line is almost as colossal as the coaster itself. I'm only speaking in terms of physical length though. Titan has always been a walk-on in my visits to Six Flags Over Texas, and a quick check on QTimes.com shows the average wait is no more than 15 minutes most days. Having a wait this short for a hypercoaster is exceedingly rare, but this coaster has a high throughput, and the convoluted location probably deters people from rewriting it. Titan has three trains, each seating 30 riders. I have only seen Titan use two trains at any given time, but the crew working this ride usually avoids stacking them. That is assisted by the ride's long duration. The ride is almost three minutes in length if you include the slow lift and full length of the brake run. These trains are identical to the ones on Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain. 
The seats are quite comfortable and you're restrained by a simple seat belt and lap bar combo. One cool feature on these trains is that you have a zippered pouch on the seat backs for loose articles such as phones, wallets, and keys. This helps speed up dispatches by eliminating the need for someone to take a trip to a cubby and it also keeps your loose articles more secure. In terms of seat selection, I have a slight preference for the front for the sense of speed you get in the first half. But the back does have one extra airtime moment if you'd prefer that. Titan begins with a slow climb up the lift. It takes nearly a minute to ascend this lift hill, but I don't mind since you get some awesome views of the park to your right and the sports stadiums for the Texas Rangers and Dallas Cowboys to your left. Once you reach at the top, you slowly crest over the drop. Now unfortunately, this drop is not as good as those found in other hyper coasters from companies like B&M, Intamin, or even Morgan. If you look at the profiling, you can sort of tell that you quickly hit your max angle of descent and you hold it for a very long time. And because it's more shallow than a lot of other hyper coasters, the airtime is a bit weaker. If you're in the back row, you just get some decent flutter airtime for the first half of the drop. The pullout is really gradual, and oddly it's one of the few spots in this ride that doesn't crush you with positive G's. But it is cool how you fly through an underground tunnel, and the speed will make your eyes water if you're riding up front. That's followed by a gargantuan turnaround. This element feels sort of awkward on a hyper coaster. It feels more akin to a turnaround you'd see in a classic wooden coaster. But it does offer some laterals since it's barely banked at the top. Unfortunately, the entrance and exit of this element offer no airtime, and that's a general flaw with this coaster. You then dive towards the ground, getting slammed into your seat from the intense positive G's, and then you rip over a camelback. This hill delivers rather weak but very sustained floater airtime throughout the entire train. And sadly, this is the last airtime moment on this coaster. Airtime hills are the most prominent feature of most hyper coasters, so what does Titan do instead? It focuses on positive G's. So if those are your thing, you will love Titan. This camelback is followed by a 540 degree upwards helix. And this is easily the best part of the ride. This helix is taken at breakneck speeds and the positive G's are unbelievable. It offers some of the strongest positives of any coaster and I started to gray out on each ride. It really is a shame that Goliath is missing this element. Up until this point, Titan has felt fast, but that all changes in the mid-course brake run. You come to a loud and grinding halt. This really kills the coaster's sense of speed, and it's one of the biggest advantages of most hyper coasters. That being said, I do understand why you're slowed so severely here, because the G's in the second half are intense even under these circumstances. I'm morbidly curious to know how strong they'd be if you flew through that mid-course brake run untrimmed. You slowly turn off the mid-course down this twisting drop, and then you traverse an overbank that drops you back down to the ground, allowing you to regain some speed. That's followed by another intense helix. The magnitude of the positive G's in this helix pales in comparison to the first one, but they're sustained for just as long. I don't usually start graying out on this helix, but I know quite a few people who do. After this helix, you navigate a few lackluster turns, and then you hit the brake run ending the ride. So what would I rate Titan? I would give this coaster a 6.5 out of 10. This is a contrarian hyper coaster. Most have out and back layouts loaded with airtime hills. Titan has just one airtime hill, and instead it focuses on the positive G's. This is not what I personally look for in a hyper coaster, but if extreme positive G's are your cup of tea, you'll love Titan. I prefer to get my G's on a looper. I do still enjoy Titan as the ride is extremely smooth and has a good sense of speed in the first half. I'm just comparing it to the other hyper coasters out there. I will take Titan over Goliath because of that extra helix, and I will take it over two of the Cedar Fair Morgan hypers in Mamba and Wild Thing, but I'm going to take the airtime focused hyper coasters over this almost every time. And I think Titan is probably the third or fourth best coaster in the park. So those are my thoughts on Titan, the Giovanola Hyper at Six Flags Over Texas. What are your thoughts on this ride? Have you ridden this coaster? Or have you ridden the sister ride in Goliath? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. 
Thanks for watching.